Good morning all. Uh, I want to turn this, which is a strip of 32 Neo pixels, and which is currently programmed um, with a little assembly language code program in the pick to do this. Uh, just put random colors on all the LEDs. And the randomization is done using a linear feedback shift register because it's something that you can very easily code in assembly language and get this nice sweep of random colors. But this project isn't really very accessible. I mean, it's not obvious to people what it is or what it's doing, and it's a curiosity, and people will just look at it and go, oh, yeah, very nice. So I want to turn this into a lightsaber where you press a button, and I'll probably go for green. A light sort of builds up and fills up the entire array, and then, I don't know, you release the button, or maybe you press the button a second time, and that line of light drops back to the beginning. Uh, so it's probably not an enormous amount of code change in here, but it is a significant amount. And the problem with code, uh, assembly language code in particular, is this program is three pages of assembly language, and I've kind of forgotten how it all works. So in order to try and explain how this works, and also to remind myself how it's all working so that I can change it, um, I thought I'd uh, try and do a little explanation of of how you drive these WS2812B NeoPixels uh, using something as simple as uh, an 8-bit microcontroller in assembly language. But let's get right down to the nuts and bolts of this thing. So at the very lowest level, we need to send out um, a pulse to the first pixel here, and then that gets propagated through to all the others, um, which is either a short pulse or a long pulse. So I'm just going to call this pulse and it's it's a high going pulse it's either short or it's long I'll draw it like that now I think the short pulse is a zero pretty sure that's right and the long pulse is a one let's just confirm this with the WS2812 datasheet right yes here it is so a zero code has a short high part and a long low part they haven't drawn these as very distinctly different but uh, a one code has a high sorry, a long high and a short low. Now it turns out that the timing for the low, which they've got a table and it's very precise. Let me see if I can find that. That's in here. Yes, here we are. We've got all these timings for the high part, uh, 0.8 microseconds plus or minus 150 nanoseconds. Absolutely not the case. You can have this, um, the length of this low part pretty much as long as you want as long as it doesn't get so long that it becomes the reset code. But this is in the milliseconds range, and these are in the sort of microsecond, even nanosecond range. So I've drawn it slightly differently. I've drawn it as a short pulse high and the low fairly irrelevant, or a long pulse high with the low timing fairly irrelevant. Now, what is critical is that T0 high, so um, the high part of the pulse for a zero, sending out a zero, is 400 nanoseconds plus or minus 150 nanoseconds. Now I found that it really does need to be less than 500 nanoseconds or, um, yes, less than 500 nanoseconds was what I found it needs to be. So I'm going to mark that on there. And uh, correspondingly, the low part, uh, no, no, the high of the one, this does get very confusing actually, so the high code of the one, where's that? That's T1 high. This says it has to be 800 nanoseconds, plus or minus 150. Well, I reckon it needs to be probably, yes, more than about 650. So that's probably about right. So let's say that it has to be greater than, uh, I don't know, let's say, well, let's say 650 nanoseconds. So this is the spec for a pulse. We need a short high going pulse. Uh, or a long high going pulse, depending on whether we want to send a one or a zero. Now we need to send out eight bits uh, in a serial data stream to specify the amount of green. I think it's green first. Again, we need to refer to the WS2812 data sheet. Um, that's on this page. Yes, you don't send it out RGB, you send the code out GRB, green, red, blue. It's a bit weird, but there it is. 
So in my code, I have a subroutine called pulse. And depending on the uh, status of the carry flag, whether it's high or low, it will create either a short pulse or a long pulse. Now, unfortunately, pulse is split over two pages. So I'm just going to do a bit of cut and paste with some Prit stick. So here's my subroutine, which produces either the short pulse or the long pulse. Now you can see here that the very first thing that's done is that the carry flag is tested. And depending on the uh, state of the carry flag, whether it's high or low, we do, um, we skip, this instruction skips a go to. So it either skips the go to and goes to pulse long and then does a return that returns back to the call for this subroutine. Uh, or we don't skip the go to and it does the go to and goes to pulse short. So it either executes pulse long or pulse short, not both of them. So the linear sort of flow of text in a text document um, that this code is doesn't really very well represent what this code is doing. I'll draw it actually as a flow chart. Right, this instruction says uh, bit test the status file and skip if the carry bit is set. So if the carry bit is high set, it will do the skip and go to a long pulse. For some reason, I've written LED on there. That's not really right. That's long pulse. So if the flag is set, we get a long pulse. So here um, I'm doing a test of the carry flag. If the carry equals a one, it jumps to a pulse long. And if carry equals a zero, it jumps to pulse short. And then both of these um, do a return. So you never join back up. You either go down that route and return to the calling subroutine, or you go down this route and return to the calling subroutine. So another return in there. You can see the returns here at the end of either the long pulse or the short pulse. Now the short pulse is simply implemented by doing a set bit two of the GPIO. Now bit two is pin uh, IO pin two, and that's what's actually going off to the NeoPixel strip. So we uh, set it and then immediately clear it. And at um, eight megahertz clock divided by four, so it's about two megahertz, uh, so these instructions are 500 nanoseconds each. The clock I've managed to get to run slightly above 8 megahertz, so it's slightly less than 500 nanoseconds. So that uh, adheres to that criteria. Set GPIO bit 2 and then immediately clear it. That creates our less than 500 nanoseconds high going pulse. This one does very similar, sets GPIO 2, but puts in a couple of no ops. So this one is going to be ooh, probably about 1500 nanoseconds. Now I talked about the calling uh, subroutine, the subroutine that calls this subroutine. Well, it may not be a subroutine, but the piece of code that calls pulse. Well, I found it and it's called LED. So LED calls pulse. There it is. You can see that it calls pulse. It also calls this get 24 and put 24 but they're actually fairly irrelevant from the point of this explanation. So I'm just going to cross them out. And uh, so all it actually does is it sets a pulse counter to eight because we need to send out eight pulses to set the color of an LED. Now you've got to remember that the NeoPixels contain three LEDs. So this subroutine is only setting the brightness of one of the three LEDs either the red one, the green one, or the blue one, or should I say the green one, the red one and the blue one, because that's the order that you do this. So let's say, for example, that we're just trying to set the brightness of the green LED. Well, then this subroutine LED sets a counter to eight, calls pulse, which puts out a pulse, either short or long, depending on what the carry flag is doing. This routine, incidentally, doesn't affect the carry flag at all. Uh, so it sets the counter to eight, calls pulse, and then decrements that counter and checks for zero. If there is a zero, it will skip and it will do a return to whichever subroutine is above this one and called this one. We haven't seen that yet, of course. So in fact, all this does is it calls pulse eight times. Now, the thing about just calling this pulse subroutine eight times without actually uh, altering the value of the, the carry flag 
is that we're going to send out the same pulse length, either a short or a long, eight times. Now, that's fine for the lightsaber because I want to turn on a green LED to full brightness. So in order to do that, I need to make sure that the carry flag is set so that we get the long pulse. Call this pulse subroutine eight times. We will then get eight long pulses. And that means what I've sent to the first LED, which I want to make green, is eight ones. Now that says, turn the green LED on to full brightness because one, 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 is the brightness value. So it means turn the first LED on, the green one, to full brightness. That's what this LED subroutine does. Now, a NeoPixel contains three LEDs. So I found the next bit of code which uh, calls LED. So this is the thing which calls this one. Uh, this one sets a counter to three. So it calls LED three times. And that's because there are three LEDs in a NeoPixel. So if you execute this loop three times, which calls this one, uh, which then calls this one eight times, you get a three multiplied by eight. So you're sending 24 of these either short or long pulses to the NeoPixel. And that's the full string of bits you need to define the uh, green, red, and blue color. So we've got this one executes three times, calls this one, which executes eight times around the loop, which calls this one, which only executes once, but has this choice of either a short or no, a short or a long pulse. Now here, because we want to send uh, eight longs for green, we need to make sure that the first time we go around this loop, we uh, set the carry flag so that the when it gets down to this subroutine, it sends out eight long pulses. The second and third time around the loop, which is going to be for red and blue, we want to send out all short pulses because I don't want the red and blue LEDs coming on at all. So for the second and third time around this loop, we need to make sure that the carry flag is set low so that when it's tested here, short pulses go out rather than long. And uh, in the linear feedback shift register program, this changing of what you send out was done by these calls to something called get24 and put24. I can't even remember what they are. I'm gonna cross them out, but I will need to replace them with something that chooses whether we're sending ones or zeros to turn the green LEDs on, but the red and the blue LEDs off. So something needs to go in there. So at this third level up, the pixel level, we need to call this routine LED uh, once with the carry flag set high, and then call LED twice with the carry flag set low. Each time we call LED, of course, it's calling pulse eight times. So at the pixel level, what have we done? Well, we've sent out 24 pulses. Now that's only going to set the color for one of these NeoPixels. We now need to do uh, the same stuff again for all the remaining 31 NeoPixels, because there are 32. And in the finished lightsaber, there might be 64, actually. So we need another subroutine higher up again. I'm going to have to shovel these all down. And this one is called strip. It's for the entire strip of 32 NeoPixels. And you can see here that I'm doing pretty much the same as this and this, but it's at the next level up. And I'm doing it 20 times. Now remember 20 is hexadecimal. So in decimal, I'm actually doing something 32 times. So at this level, I'm sending out enough pulses to fill up the entire strip of 32 NeoPixels. What's it gonna do? Uh, we don't need to call LFSR because that's the old program, the get and the put thing. Uh, it's just going to have to uh, decide whether or not these pixels are green or not, and then call pixel 32 times, which then calls lead three times, which calls pulse uh, eight times, which creates eight pulses. It's a hierarchy. It's nested subroutines. Now let's assume that we're turning the first LED on, the one uh, right up on the right-hand side in this case. It's basically the one that has the wire going into it. So it's the first LED and we want to make it green. Well, in that case, then we'll set the carry flag high and call pixel. Uh, actually, no, we'll need another flag because we need a flag to indicate 
uh, whether the LED, the green LED is going to be on or off. So I will need another flag. I probably should stop using the carry flag. It's very naughty to use the carry flag to indicate whether the pulse should be short or long. Yes, I may uh, use a different flag. I got away with it because actually in pick assembly language, very few instructions affect the carry flag. So it almost is a general purpose uh, bit in a register, but not quite. Uh, so I need to turn on uh, the first pixel. So I need to call pixel 32 times, but the first time I call it, I need to make sure that I make the pixel green. The remaining 31 times that I call it, I need to make the pixel off because I want to just turn on that first pixel. Then I'm going to call strip again. Remember, I'm writing to the entire strip um, where I make the first two LEDs green and the remaining 30 will be off. Then I call it again where I make the first three LEDs green and the remaining 29 will be off. And you can see that by doing that, I'm going to build up the number of LEDs which are green. So I need another uh, calling subroutine above this one, which probably called something like animate. So we're at, uh, we're at five levels of nested subroutines now. And this will simply call strip uh, 32 times, or it might be 31 possibly, where we turn the light green on just the first pixel to start with, then on the first two pixels, then on the first three, then on the first four. And there may need to actually to be a delay bet uh, between the animate routine and the strip routine uh, so that this happens at a rate that we can see it build up because we don't want it to shoot up so fast that it appears that they just all come on at one time. We want it to step its way up so that it looks like the lightsaber is extending to its full length. So I've put here that the animate routine needs to call strip 32 times, but it needs to add one green pixel each time. So each time we call strip, we need to increment a counter probably. Another register will be required for that. And that will tell me how many green pixels I need to send out and how many off pixels I need to send out. Right, 32 times 24 is 768. Now I need to know that because I need to send out uh, eight pulses per LED, uh, 24 pulses per pixel, but there are 32 pixels on a strip, on this strip, so that's 768 pulses. But in order to animate uh, that, I actually need to send out the 768 pulses 32 times, so multiplied by 32. So the full animation will actually send out 24,576 pulses, um, but not hugely quickly because the animate needs to be something slow enough for the human eye to see it but it is a lot of pulses it's a lot of calls to this subroutine at the bottom this is going to get called 24,000 times uh, that will extend the green light up to the end of the lightsaber then when you either release the button or press it for a second time I haven't decided which I want to do yet um, it will have to run another animation which will retract the green line all the way back to the hilt or the handle I suppose it is and that'll be another 24,576 calls to the pulse subroutine. So to extend and retract your lightsaber, 50,000 calls to that subroutine. Right, I'm going to get coding, so cheerio. Right, first draft of my program, and I've managed to get it to do this. It's lighting up. They're white, they're not green. I wanted them green. Well, I think I can fix that. There's an out by one error here because the very last pixel isn't lighting, but I can fix that. And it's a bit slow. I think I can fix that one quite quickly. Right, that's fixed the speed. I think that's quite a nice speed. Yeah, I like that.